You are looking at the White House on this Tuesday, where Vice President Kamala Harris has secured support from enough Democratic delegates to become the presumptive nominee against former President Trump. Senior administration official telling our Martha Raddatz, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro and Arizona Senator Mark Kelly are the leading candidates for Kamala Harris's running mate. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze joins me now from the White House, along with ABC News executive editorial producer John Santucci uh, sitting right next to me. Elizabeth, good to see you. We'll start with you first. What are you learning about the Veep stakes now? Right, so as you say, our Martha Raddatz is reporting, according to a senior administration official, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro and Arizona Senator Mark Kelly are the two top contenders at the moment in this vetting process for possible running mates for Vice President Harris. Of course, this is still early days, but this process does need to move along quickly, Phil. The goal from the DNC is to do this virtual roll call within the next basically 10 days to try to lock down what the ticket could look like. So that's why we are seeing this urgency to nail down some of those candidates. When you think about what those two might bring to a Democratic ticket, it's undeniable that they are from states that Democrats need to win if they want to keep the presidency. Think about Pennsylvania. Margins are so tight there in such a battleground state, in a state where Shapiro has been incredibly popular first-term governor. Mark Kelly, Arizona, also a battleground state. Democrats trying to, to keep uh, momentum there. So other names that we've seen floated, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, uh, another popular governor in, in the South, a rare Democrat in a Southern state. Roy Cooper of North Carolina has been floated as another name. He is a two-term Democratic governor in North Carolina, which is a redder state. So one of the things that the, t that the Harris campaign will be looking at as part of this process is who can they add to their ticket to try to bring in some of those key swing voters, Phil? John, I want to turn to you. Yeah. Uh, Trump said he'd focus on unity. You were at the convention. Uh, this was a speech after, you know, he, someone had taken a shot at him. Yep. But then at the first ra uh, rally for his running mate, J.D. Vance, Republican Senator George Lang, mm -hmm. uh, said this, and I'll quote it. I'm afraid if we lose this one, it's going to take a civil war to save our country. If we lose a civil war. He's now said he regrets those remarks. But you speak to the Trump campaign. Sure. Uh, how it, does their messaging have to change? How has it changed since the convention with the emergence of Kamala Harris? Well, not much yet, right? I mean, if you look at Donald Trump's activity on social media, Phil, it's still a lot of Joe Biden, very little Kamala Harris. Look, sure. the, the two of them, J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, did their first joint interview last night over on Fox News. They started to change the rhetoric a little bit. J.D. Vance did his first campaign event yesterday where he started to turn the heat up on Kamala Harris. But as one person said to me, look, We've been playing this book for three and a half years on Biden. Now we have to make the turn. And when you talk to Trump world, it's a bit of a mixed bag in the sense that some people say, look, this will be kind of easy because she's, of course, you know, the number two. She's the vice president. We're going to tie everything with Biden and her together. It's the same package. No big deal. Other people, though, say, well, OK, she's younger. She's a better debater. She's a former prosecutor. And that's something that they're bracing themselves for, that, you know, she is unknown in the respect of the day-to-day, head-to-head combat they've been doing for much of the last several years. Right, and tr Trump's a big fan of numbers and crowds, $100 million in 24 hours, 50,000 volunteers. And that is something that scares them very right, much, that money imagine. matters. Uh, Elizabeth, Vice President Harris will hold her first campaign rally today in Milwaukee, where, the, of course, the Republican National Convention was just held. What are you listening for today? Well, and we know that the Harris campaign did start to lay out its initial argument, sharpening its attacks against Donald Trump. They have this line that Harris will prosecute the case against Trump, something that they want to make a play on her experience as a prosecutor. And we are told that today in Milwaukee, she will focus on a couple of issues that we know are so central to Democrats heading into November, the issue of abortion, which Harris has already been front and center on for the administration. And she also expects to take on Project 2025, which is that sweeping proposal from some former Trump aides that would really reshape the role of the federal government. We expect Harris to be tough against Trump. The campaign says that there is no better place for her to make this case than in Wisconsin, where, of course, the RNC was held just last week. Okay.
All right, and John, what qualities does the Harris campaign need in a running mate? I mean, they're swing states. The, the people they're talking about are in swing states, but what means more than what when they're looking? Somebody with a 570 area code, which is the big area code in Arizona. I mean, seriously, I'm not even being funny They know here. a guy. They know a guy. And Mark <laughs> Kelly, I think yeah. it was Martha Raddatz, as Elizabeth mentioned in her reporting, that is a guy that, to me, is a no-brainer, right? Because it's a battleground state. Mark Kelly and his wife, Gabby Giffords, are beloved in Arizona. I mean, that's a state you have to remember, Phil. Though Donald Trump lost it in 2020, recent polling, when you look at the battleground matchups, has shown Arizona perhaps going more Donald Trump's mm. way. They do that, it virtually kills Arizona off the map for Donald Trump. So I do think strategically, at the end of the day, it's not going to come up so much to somebody's personal story, which Mark Kelly obviously has, astronaut, everything with his wife, et cetera. But it's somebody that virtually changes the map. And if you look at the two names that Martha's reporting right now between Mark Kelly or Josh Shapiro, look at Donald Trump's own words on that. Donald Trump said he picked J.D. Vance, that he'd literally go set up shop in Pennsylvania. They know the battlegrounds is where this comes down to, Phil. Right. All right. John Santucci, Elizabeth Schulze, thank you both very yeah. much.